Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f*** up. <laughs> You're listening to Believe You Me with Michael the Count Bisbing. You know my name yet? And Anthony Lionheart Smith. Uh, all right, it's Monday. We're back. Anthony Smith is in the house. Anthony, you're leaving for Brazil, buddy. What? What? Uh, when do you fly off? Uh, I leave tomorrow at three o'clock. I gotta go to gotta go to Houston, Texas first, and then we're uh, off to uh, we're off to Brazil. Ten and a half hours. Yeah, no, I know, I know. The, the flight down there does suck. Uh, let me ask you this. I mean, obviously, more than likely, you're not gonna fight, right? I mean, I'm assuming right. that's your opinion. There's probably a 2%, maybe 1%, 0.1%. Who knows? The odds of you fighting are very slim, but talk to me about the mentality of what it was like training, getting ready for a fight that you feel that might not happen, but of course you're going to fight in March as well. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, Mike, I didn't really even think about either one of those guys. I really didn't. I, I was just training to, to I, I, like I would be in training camp anyways. So uh, we just trained like normal and – you know, I'm in good shape already. Um, things are going well. I'm already sharp. Um, I just started a little bit earlier, but if I'm fighting March 11th, you know, we would be six weeks out right now anyways, something like that. Well, but by the end of January, it'd be like six. Do weeks you out. have an opponent for March 11th in mind or can you not say? No, I don't know. I think a lot of it depends on how the Johnny Walker, Paul Craig fight goes. Yeah. Yeah. And we just go from there to see what happens in the title fight. But so I'd be training for that fight anyways, especially as I get older, the training camps have to be a little bit longer because it just takes me yeah. a little bit longer to, to get rolling. But I just trained hard. I didn't really think about either guy um, and just focused on getting my weight down. But other than that, man, I it just fairly normal. Nice. Nice. Let me ask you this. Glover to share Jamal Hill. Would you mind sharing with me if that fight goes down, which it is going to go down? Let's be honest. Um, who do you think wins that? You know, because obviously you have a lot of in You fought Glover. Yeah. And you've trained with Jamal, right? So you know yeah. these guys better than anybody. In your opinion, who gets the job done? Uh, this is one of those few times where I don't know. Um, it it really comes down to who's gonna who's gonna impose their will, who's gonna who, who's gonna really, I guess, force their game plan on the other one. It if it stays standing and Glover can't get a takedown, I, he he just can't beat Jamal. I don't. I, I. I truly believe that if he can't take him down and he can't keep him there consistently, I don't think he can beat him. If Jamal mm -hmm. can't defend the takedown or he can't stay safe enough on the ground and get back to his feet, um, uh, he's gonna have a really tough time winning this fight. So yeah, and both I, guys I, know that. Both guys know yeah, that. They yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they know what they know what they're getting themselves into. I will say that Glover is stronger and sneakier than than it looks like on film he's his, his positional awareness and control is is different than anybody i've ever been around um or been in there with he's just really tough on top um he's patient he's very very patient and he does he doesn't seem to force things he's okay dropping a round or two rounds and, and and kind of investing in the longer end of the fight um jamal is hard to get to he's hard to hit uh he's fast he he's deceivingly fast um what about his takedown defense? It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. You're, you're going to have to. That, that, that's the key issue for him here in this yeah, fight. It's, yeah, it's not bad. Um, he does a good job of staying off the fence. Uh, he's mobile. He doesn't look like an athlete like you would typically think. Um, he moves really well. He's 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 less explosive, but, he, but he's very smooth and fast. And, mm. and, and that can be a bigger problem sometimes than big explosive guys because um, he's he's. I don't know, man. He's different. He just doesn't, if you look at him, he doesn't look like your stereotypical MMA athlete. Um, he's a really fast learner. Um, so if he sees something once, you're probably not going to get him with it the second time. It's just, he picks up on things very quickly. So money where your mouth is time. And, and, and if you don't want to say maybe because it's a bit awkward for you, I'm sure you won't care, but let's just say you had $5,000 and you had a gun to your head and you had to bet on one man to win this fight. And if you get it wrong, you get terminated, and so does Brian and Harrington. They get their heads blown off, and don't get it wrong on purpose. Uh, where would you put that five thousand dollars? Jamal Hill. Yeah, I think I'm kind of leaning that way as well. Yeah, I'm excited Jamal. for it. It's kind of like sudden death for both men. 
You know what it I is. mean? Because if Jamal lands, we've seen time and time again, he's got that crazy knockout power. And if mm-hmm. Glover can get him down, and if Jamal makes one mistake, whether that's be trying to get back, back to his feet and gives up his back, gives up the mount, whatever it is, if he makes any kind of technical mistakes on the ground and he gets taken down initially, then that could be game over for him as well. So high stakes yeah, indeed. It's brother. high stakes. That's I think high that's, stakes. I, I hope that uh I hope that the you know the the fans and the and and, and everyone watching the fights understand like how high stakes maybe it's mm. not like the biggest sexiest fight but it it's super high stakes because the first guy that makes a mistake loses for sure yeah yeah exactly that's exactly how i see it but all right we'll talk a bit more about that on thursday you can shoot us a little update of how it's all going let me ask you this how many pounds have you got to cut so you're flying tomorrow you're gonna land Mm -hmm. i don't know late tuesday night um how many Uh, pounds probably by the time i land because you you, you'll i'll hold on to a little bit of weight and water, you know, uh, just from the long flight, I'll probably have to cut, I don't know, 20. Yeah. And and yeah. you're being compensated. So 20, no. ooh, 20 pounds hard cut, man. Oof. Uh, That's not, nasty. Not too, not too bad. You know, I, like there's a lot of those guys at 55 that are cutting 20 the week of, and that's a much larger percentage of their body weight. When it so comes I mean, down to the hard cut, to actually getting in the sauna or the sweating. In fact, what is your method? Right. Uh, do you do the sauna? Do you do the salt bath? I mean, what do you do? I usually start with the bath. Um, and I probably do the majority of it uh, in the bath. And then yeah. see, I'll sauna. Uh, we'll use those. Uh, the UFC's got these new things. They're sauna blankets. Oh, where it's yeah, almost yeah, like yeah. A, I've got one at my house. Yeah. I got do you really? one. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. It's just like a like a it's like a, a sleeping bag kind of. And you just. It heats up and you get in it. And those, I didn't really They're think. They're not that good. Work. I didn't like him. I got sent one and, and I was testing it out and I let in it. I was like, yeah, I was sweating a little bit. I was sweating definitely for sure. And I was like, Callum, you can take this because you're wrestling at college. Mm-hmm. But if I had to make, if I had to, a massive weight cut, I don't think I'd be lying in one of those blankets. Uh, see, I thought the same thing. And it was, them, them goddamn things get hot. I mean, we had to turn it down. Because I was oh, really? like, yeah, I was like, yeah. it couldn't even touch my skin the last time I used it, it was so hot. But um, so I'll do the last, I don't know, two or three probably in that thing. But throughout the week, I'll, I'll, I'll shed a, a, you know, three or four a day. And then probably Thursday night, I'll probably. Three or four. What are you doing? <laughs> it's just because changing I, my I, diet. I react I, really well to diet changes. So yeah, th- three or four is a lot though, because I used to do the, uh, you know, obviously training too. Diet. No carbs whatsoever. Still training, of course, and and then obviously pounding the water, the uh, yeah. the distilled water, tons of that. But I would only lose like a pound, a pound and a half a day, three or four. That's amazing. Really? Well, I'm still training too. So yeah, you know, as I'm sweating in my workouts and and I'm fully hydrated, you know, it's yeah, probably three or four a day. And then by the time it comes down to my final hard cut, I'll have I don't know eight or nine. Yeah, do most yeah. of it the night before. Wake up and cut well, the last couple. No, nah, it's not too bad. Well, when you it said 20 sucks. pounds, I, I thought you meant like 15, 16, 17 as a hard cut because no. that would be insane. But anyway, all right, well, listen, best of luck with that, buddy. Safe travels. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I guess we'll see how it plays out. I guess we'll yeah, see how see it plays happens. out. Yeah, yeah. In your mind, Anthony, what would be the ideal situation? You get into fight. Because if you do fight, of course, it's risky, right? It's a little bit risky because you haven't had a full camp. So do you want the fight to go ahead? Or or, or would you rather step in and save the day? If I'm being very honest, I'd rather rather let them go ahead and fight and see how that plays out. I thought Um, so. Just just because, honestly, kind of for those guys. You know, like they've been through a lot. Glover's been through a a shit ton. Um, (laughs) it's not the most ideal situation for any of us because they kind of got thrown together too, kind of short notice and not necessarily a hundred percent prepared. So yep, um, yep. I'd rather just let them play out, but I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm in shape. I'm sharp. I'm, I feel good. Like if I got to fight, I'll fight. And honestly, yeah, it might almost be better that way. If just like the day before they're like, Hey, you're in like, kind of like you talk about it a lot with your fight where you didn't have a bunch of time to sit around and think about it. You didn't get a, a, a bunch of opportunities to second guess yourself or, Mm-hmm. overtrain or worry about you know certain shit like maybe that is the best way to just go in and do the damn thing 
just jump in and get it done. <laughs> get it, get all it done. Get it done. All right. Well, listen, unless you were living under a rock, you must have heard there was some massive news broke at the weekend. Uh, no, it uh, it, inadvertently, you must have seen that John Jones is trying to you must, you must have seen it inadvertently. Somebody at the T-Mobile Arena. What do we think? Anthony okay, I didn't Brandley, see how. Well. I didn't. I didn't see how well, though. The T-Mobile someone said something Arena. About a billboard. Yeah, the T-Mobile Arena put up what must be a thirty-foot billboard saying Jones and Cyril Garn, March fourth, I think it was. Mm-hmm. But the UFC hadn't announced it, so they totally. Yeah, well oh, done, Brian. God. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. And the fight hadn't even been announced yet. So one's oh, got to no. think that this morning. Um, someone's been called to the office and said, who the hell, who the hell mm-hmm. authorized this? You know what someone I mean? Someone went home early today. Oh, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Let me ask you, Brian and Harrington, show yourselves, please. Boys, how are we doing? What's up, Mike? What would be the, uh, you know, if Harrington was to make a blunder of that kind of magnitude, what would that be? Do you know what I mean? You know what? I've seen Harrington make blunders of magnitudes that, have no repercussions so i can't even imagine there's nothing it, it would be nothing nothing would happen to him that is quite the blunder though how are you harrington you well mate i'm doing excellent mike how are you i'm very good i'm very good yeah so uh so i'd say hello bring you on the show for a second um cyril gone john jones and gone who's left where should we start should we start with Engano leaving yeah we'll, yeah we'll start with Engano leaving so Engano's who's left which is a shame I, I, it's a shame. I, I like, I don't know him too well. I've had a few interactions with him. I've always found him to be a decent person. Uh, a good guy, hell of a fighter, of course, heavyweight, undisputed champion, uh, catches everybody's imagination with that insane knockout power. And it's a shame he's not going to be in the UFC. I get it because he wants to be able to fight elsewhere and do his own thing. And one's got to think that the main thing that's driving that is this boxing fight with Tyson Fury after one of Fury's fights, I forget which one it was, and Garni was there, mm-hmm. and he was like, have you got a big Corey? Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, he's like, have you got yeah, a big Corey and all the rest of it? <laughs> yeah. So you can't blame Francis because he might make 10, 15 million in that fight against the Tyson Fury, but it's not guaranteed to happen, though. It's just because that moment happened, there's been many fights, and m- 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 lots of promotion. It's not guaranteed to happen. Um I hope it does for his sake, and I would love to see it. Fury versus Ngannou, I really, really would. What a spectacle that would be. It'd be like Thunderlips versus Rocky. Have you seen that, Anthony? No, no. Is, uh, of course not. Rocky 1 or Rocky 2? You When Hulk Hogan fights uh, Sylvester oh. Stallone, you never seen that? I don't think so. I've seen the Rocky yeah. movies, but I don't remember... Yeah, there's a bit of Thunderlips. That's who Hulk Hogan plays, Thunderlips. But still, it'd be crazy. Muhammad Ali did it as well, didn't he? Muhammad Ali, I think he fought a guy back in the day, like a judo guy or someone like that. But regardless, what are your thoughts? Uh, Inoki, he was a Japanese yes. professional Oh, it was like a mixed rules fight, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there, oh there's Thunderlips <laughs> getting choked up by Sylvester. Nice work, Brian. Nice work. Yeah, uh, Anthony, your thoughts, my friend? You know... I don't, I don't mean to burst everybody's bubble, and I know that I'm going to get the, the same shit we get all the time. We're company men. We're just shills. We're, gonna, you know, we're just mouthpieces for the UFC. I never have understood this Francis Ngannou thing. I, I am pro fighter. I want, I want all the fighters to make as much money as they possibly can. Like, Amen I, to that. I want you to dig deep in Uncle Dana's pockets as, as deep as you can. It's, that's, that's what I want. I, but I'm, a, I'm realistic. And I, and I understand, I understand the sport and the business of the sport. If Francis, just say he gets the Tyson Fury fight, we, we know how that's going to go. But as analysts, we, there's not a world where Francis Ngannou beats Tyson Fury. Like Francis Ngannou is just a regular dude in the heavy as a heavyweight boxer. He's 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 uncommon in MMA. He he's he's unique. He's very special. But in professional boxing, he's average at best. And, and at best, he, he's an average puncher. He's a below average boxer. He's below average in his footwork and movement. He's below average in his defense. He, he's not going to fare that well as a heavyweight professional boxer. So no. because he has a fantastic name and, and, and an incredible highlight reel in MMA, he's going to get a big fight for sure. But probably just one. And, and 
is he going to go somewhere else in MMA and make a, a, as much money as he would make getting pay-per-view revenue and, and being behind the promotional monster that the UFC is? I don't think well, so. Where's he going to go? Bellator? Okay, even if Bellator was going to pay him more. Maybe once. But where's the... Comp- I don't care what anybody says. It's all about compelling matchups. That's what sells mm. fights. There's maybe one or two guys out there outside of the UFC at, on the MMA side that are compelling matchups. And, and they don't have the promotional push that the UFC has. They don't have the, the, the grip and the handhold on the market like the UFC has. Or the pay-per-view revenue. Or the pay-per-view you know what revenue. I mean? Even the PFL. Like, even if they do go down this pay-per-view route, you still need a dance partner. You need someone that's as compelling as Francis Ngannou is, and they don't have that. So I, I always think of things, and this is how I did my own contract negotiation. Could I have made more money in my last negotiation somewhere else. Initially, yeah, I probably could have. But I got to think long-term, like not just the next two years. Where am I going to make the most money in the next five or the next 10? And that's, I feel like that's maybe one of the, and I, again, I'm not I'm not trying to count Francis Sagano's money. I don't know no. how his business works. But if I'm uh, speculating, he probably initially is going to make more money somewhere else. But if you look down the well, long term, I mean, I can I can rattle off six or seven guys off the top of my head that are compelling matchups for Francis Ngannou in the UFC. There's the Derek Lewis. If Derek Lewis went on a run and got a couple wins, I'd love to see that fight go again. There's John Jones for one. There's John Jones. There's uh, a Cyril Gon. Tom Aspinall down with, the line. There's Tom, Curtis Blades. Yeah. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch you of keep them. Keep going. And, keep going. Ryan Bader is the Bellator heavyweight champion right now. I, I love you know and I'm I love saying? Bader, but oh, that's not compelling course. to and, me. It's not compelling. It's not compelling. I don't give a shit about that. I, I just, in boxing, that's what I'm worried about. Like he's going to get one big boxing fight. And after that, it, the new is going to wear off. And then we're going to see how good he actually is. And people are like, oh, fuck, he's not that good. I mean, because I mean, what's he going to do? I think, and, and by the way, I'm not, hey, God bless him. And I hope it all works out for him. But I, I, I think, I think it's maybe this Tyson Fury carrot that's been dangled in front of him, but it's not guaranteed. I mean, it's hard enough getting t- Tyson Fury at this stage of his career, being as wealthy as what he is, the money that he's made and the career that he's had. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he's talked about retirement and all kinds of things. So that, that fight isn't a guaranteed. Um, um, and if it isn't guaranteed, I don't think there's anywhere else that's going to pay more money. Dana said, and if we, you know, he said he is, they offered him a contract which would have made him the highest paid heavyweight fighter ever. Okay. And by, incidentally, it came out today that John Jones now has the second highest contract other than Conor McGregor. So congratulations to Jones for that. I know you'll probably feel differently about those words, but no, uh, for a Ingo- for, for, you know, it. it was a joke. It, it was a sure. joke. It was a joke. For, 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 for Ngannou, the highest paid heavyweight from my, from what I understand, and according to an article I read from MMA Junkie, was Brock Lesnar. For mm-hmm. Brock Lesnar for two UFC 200, they said yesterday, I read, he got $8 million. And prior to that, he was earning in the region 2 to $3 million. So if they offered him a contract that was more valuable than that, that's a lot of money he just walked away from. So the only thing that I can think of that come competes with that or could potentially generate more money would be a blockbuster heavyweight boxing fight against Tyson Fury. But that's not guaranteed to happen. Even if it does, it's one. If you're gonna if you're gonna be the highest paid heavyweight, just it, it, we'll just say it's f- five. Just to, for a, a, an easy yep. number. Say they offered him five million dollars and then he's got the pay-per-view or whatever. Even and then say he makes twenty in the Tyson Fury fight, twenty one time, or five million dollars every single time, like you don't have I to don't be know. a that, 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 That's a tough one. I might take the twenty one time just because because he always wanted to box. Apparently, he always wanted to box, and he's yeah, he wanted to box maybe. a long time ago. His coach turned him into MMA because it was more likely to happen, you know. So he can tick off that personal box and get that twenty million dollars. And I guess MMA well, will eight, always be there. You could fight three times and make more than that twenty, because you know, you and I both know after he fights that one time in boxing, there's no more twenty million dollar paychecks once they see him. No, no. There's what what are they going to do? I don't think Anthony Joshua was saying, I want Engano next. And I don't think no. Deontay, Deontay Wilder is not calling for him. None of those guys are saying, oh, we want him next. It, it, it would more than likely be a one-off occasion. And that's the thing with, that's the thing with boxing. Like you have to win. 
And and I if you put those three up against Francis and Gano, I don't know who else even yeah, you know, just take those three guys. Like he loses to any of them. It, it's over with. The boxing yeah. thing is is dead. At least the the huge paychecks, the 20 million dollar type paychecks are gone. Now if he was able to beat one of those guys, then that's a different story, but uh, you know, maybe he's the bet on himself type of guy. I hey. just don't see it happening. I, I, and God bless him because he clearly is a better on himself type of guy. And I respect yeah, I that. And I wish that. him yeah. I, and I wish him all the best. I really do. But but it sounds like we're both on the same page in terms of what he's going to achieve there. But hey, either way, because outside the UFC, what's it going to be? One FC? One FC? I, I don't think that's going to be the fit. They ain't going to have the kind of money. People, Bare Knuckle FC are talking about Francis fighting on Bare Knuckle FC. Well, if it's not listen, boxing, I hope it's bare knuckle. <laughs> bro, well, listen, who in their right mind is stepping into a ring or an octagon with Francis Ngannou with no gloves on? Do you know what I mean? That's a braver or slash stupider man than me. I'm not signing no. up for that one. And I don't know. I know bare knuckle have some big money. They've paid a lot of people some very, very handsome money. I believe they offered you a pretty decent contract as well once upon a time, but I don't think they have Francis Ngannou more than the UFC style money. Or maybe I'm wrong. Ooh. Maybe I'm woefully maybe. in the know. wrong there, but, but I can't see it. You know? Yeah, it would be, it would be fun to watch though. Mm. My oh, God, man. whatever. What a terrifying bear, prospect. Bear, Francis Ngannou. Could just, just give him a one-off. Just one-off. Just let's do one. Who, Anybody and Harrington and Brian, maybe you two jump in here as well. If there was one person, Francis Ngannou, a one-off in a bare knuckle boxing fight, who would the opponent be? Someone that might stand the chance of winning. Oh, easy, Fatal. Mike Perry. Mike Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Perry might just be crazy enough to do it. He That's might. the thing about Mike Fedor. Perry. Yeah. Fedor versus Fedor. Francis. Bare I would, That's I would the pay to, to see that. That's the fight to make. Yeah. Yeah, last time Fedor was out, I think it was against Rampage, wasn't it? You see that when he flatlined Rampage? Oh, I mean, Rampage a hell of a would be pretty sweet too. Rampage would be bloody sweet as well. I mean, Negative. it'd be a size disadvantage, <laughs> you know. I mean, Rampage is a big, heavy dude these days, but it's not the kind of he has the, the same. kind of weight he probably wants. He's, it's not the kind of weight there you go that he wants. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, listen, best of luck to Francis. It is, it's a shame, <laughs> it's a shame to see him walk away, but that's his right, it and is. I wish him. Nothing but the best going forward. So thank you for the memories. And uh, Francis I'll never Ngannou forget. versus Nate Diaz. Francis Ngannou versus Jake Paul's being thrown <laughs> around. Let's go. Okay. 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 Deal. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'd love to Deal. see that. I'd love to see that go down. Of course, with that happening, with the shakeup, we now have John Jones versus Cyril Garn for the undisputed heavyweight championship. And I think, to be fair, uh, other than a Steve Miocic. Stipe should probably have got the crack, but but he uh, didn't want to go just yet. So it's Cyril versus John, March 4th. Ah, it's, a, it, it's a tough one for Cyril Garn, in my opinion. How, how do you see that fight? You, you think it's... I think it's a pretty well-matched fight. I think that... Uh, uh, there's a lot of... I think there's more... I have more questions. Excuse me. I have more questions than like maybe well-oiled thoughts right now, to be honest with you. I... I'm so curious how John well, he, is going to how he's going to move, and 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 how like how mobile and how athletic he's going to still continue to be at yep. heavyweight. Um, I think Cyril Gaon is one of the tougher matchups for him in the entire division, and maybe the toughest matchup for him. Um, I don't know about that. I, that. That's where we have a difference of opinion. I hear what you're saying about the body type. For sure, there's going to be questions there. Will he still be as agile? Will he still be as quick? Will he still have the cardio to go five rounds and all the rest of it? Because now that's a real tax on his energy system. If he's got another 30, 40 pounds, or even if it's just 20 or 30 pounds, that's a real issue. Like, for example, much, much lower level down the totem pole, Callum, my son. You know, he wrestled at 197. Now he's, he's a growing boy. He's too big. Now he's wrestling at heavyweight. First couple of times, it caught him out. He was like, oh, my God, Dad. He said, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was getting gassed. And the, and the um, you know, the style what you wrestle uh, in uh, heavyweight is very different. different. So I've got things to learn and all the rest of it. So that's a, a, a not the best comparison, but it is a worthy comparison. Yes. But um, 
the thing is, when it comes to John Jones versus Cyril Garn, the reason I think it's, you know, and listen, don't get me wrong, on the feet, Cyril Garn is phenomenal. He's so dynamic. His footwork's phenomenal. His striking's amazing. Flying knees, beautiful jab. He has submissions as well if it hits the ground. Um, not that he's a black belt or anything, but he knows, you know, he's got a few subs. He's got a couple of heel hooks, I believe. Um, but, but, and hear me out on this, tell me what you think. If Francis Ngannou could take Cyril down time and time again, and that's essentially the path to victory for him, then I would say that John Jones can. Because whilst Francis is a phenomenally strong athlete, you know, ridiculously powerful, uh, not he's not a lifelong wrestler, didn't wrestle in college or high school or any of that stuff. He's learned a bit of wrestling through mixed martial arts, kind of like I did. John Jones is a very, very good wrestler. He would take people down very easily, shoot, blast doubles, put them down and elbow the shit out of them. I'm just thinking that if Francis can do that, a 260-pound John Jones probably can as well. Uh, potentially. Potentially. But, uh, potentially. Uh, look, look, looking back at kind of my fight with John, I remember being very concerned, you know, uh, leading up to it. Like, you know, we got to be very mindful of the takedowns and stuff. He's not, he, he's very, very tough on the fence. He's like in the clinch and he'll drop down to doubles really, really quickly. I didn't, even watching him wrestle DC, um, I didn't feel that in my fight with him. I, I, I think he shot 10 takedowns. I think he got two. So, um, I, I wonder if the Cyril gone takedown issue in the Francis and Gano fight was more surprise and shock than, mm. than maybe outright just being out wrestled. I just don't think he expected it because I don't think any yep. of us did. Valid. Um, no, no, no. I, so I think there's nobody a, there's expected something. Francis and Gano to be wrestling. Right. I think, I think there's something there. Um, but I think that some of the, the physical advantages and the way that John fights or has previously fought at 205 pounds a lot of that stuff is gone at heavyweight. He's very long. Um, doesn't necessarily use his arm reach as well as maybe he probably could. Um, it's more of a style thing. It's not that I don't think he can. He just likes to fight in a different way. Um, his movement, is his stance switches, his mobility, the, the amount of distance that he's able to cover in a short amount of time. I think all of those advantages that he has over 205 pounders is gone with a guy like Cyril gone. So what I think is going to happen is it's going to force John to have to be super technical. He's going to have to be technically superior in all areas. When I think at times he's gotten away with, and I don't want to say he's gotten away with, but it's the best way to say it. he's gotten away with maybe not always having the technical advantage in some areas because he uses his body so well and his, 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 the, as coachable as he is, I think they keep him out of some of these certain spots. He he very much boxes you into where he needs to keep you. And I, I think he's going to be forced to be technically better everywhere because he won't enjoy mm -hmm. the physical advantages and his God-given gifts that he's taken fantastic advantage of. So I think Cyril Gaon fights the way that John fights on his feet, but he's been doing it his whole life at that same size. So I, I'm curious yeah. if, if John, yeah. if he moves right into being a heavyweight, moves the same and and you know he's going to slow down there's no there's no doubt about it. he's going to be a little bit slower it's, it's, it's going to be interesting differently and be, be, if he because does that, Cyril gone he he can i mean he's a the strike is phenomenal knocked out Derek Lewis, knocked out tied to avasa many many others they're the two most recent ones so it is going to be because he's not going to be able to bully people either you know john mm -hmm. not that i'm saying bullied you or whatever but he, he's natural he, gifts he did a little so bit big on the fence and he long did. He did do it. He I, did bully I, I me a little bit on the fence. Well, I wasn't saying that. I just I can't recall the fight. If I'm honest, it was a long time ago. So yeah. many fights since. Obviously, in, you'll in space, blow by in blow. space, I think John is going to have a tough time with Cyril Gunn. Like I just couldn't quite get to John. I just couldn't quite reach him. I don't move or fight the way that Cyril Gunn fights. I don't dart in like that. So John was just always outside of range. I just couldn't quite reach him. It was so frustrating. But mm. Cyril Gunn will be able to. He, he's oh yeah no 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 he's for more sure mobile he's faster he's longer he's big i mean Cyril gone is huge i mean if we could go back and just take a look at the the face-off picture of him and francis and in think, the center of the oh. octagon that night he was bigger than francis and yeah no, he, i i had him when we had him at the desk in paris and he was next to me i could not believe how big he i mean he he dwarfed me we looked way yeah. more than just one weight class apart he was huge 
And that's the thing as well, because he's naturally at that weight. See, now granted, John, you know, you cut down from a lot of light heavyweights could fight at heavyweight. You know right. what I mean? Like a Daniel Cormier, like a Rampage Jackson, who we mentioned before, and certainly a John Jones. You know, if you don't cut weight like you now, you're 220. Yeah, there he is. I mean, Cyril does look, he's a big boy. He's a he's big, big boy. He's very powerful, but he's so used to just carrying that around. And it's going to, it's going to be so injured. And I guess we won't know. And that's what makes this fight so captivating, you know, because mm -hmm. he has been away for three years. Will there be ring rust? Will there be demons? You know, will there be, will he be rusty? You know, now, of course, he's been sparring a lot. So physically, he he's won't aging. be rusty, but, but mentally, and he's getting older. And this is a new breed of heavyweight as well. So it's going to be exciting. It's going to be mm -hmm. very, very exciting. Can't wait for it. Can't wait for it. All right, Harrington, give us a non-MMA story. I'm just looking at some of the suggestions you've put on in here. I don't know if you've looked, Anthony. I try not to because then I just get disappointed. I mean, what, <laughs> the, 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 I've had absolutely no input in any of these, and these are all bad choices. What is what, what is this one? This sounds like the well, most thing. Let me, let me, we can let me have take fun a look here. With. What is this? A woman who was do caught this? doing personal things on company time thanks to a spy software, and now a judge has ruled that she needs to pay her employer back the wages. So what was she doing? Was she masturbating or something? And then, then um, you know, she got busted. No. So what happened was there, uh, thanks to this work from home thing, right? Like a lot of employers now are putting spyware into their company software so they can track everything else you're doing. So if you're on the clock and you, let's say, go and take care of personal banking, right? Or order a birthday cake for your kid, you're now doing personal things on company time. And they're like, well, that's like, you just lost 20 minutes there, uh, 40 minutes there, 20, you know, 15 mm. minutes there and and they came back to her with a bill essentially that was like yeah you owe us this amount of money yeah but that's interesting because a lot of the time when you work from home i think you just need to get those t i mean it depends on the job right but if mm -hmm. you're working from home i can't imagine it's hourly rate do you know what I mean? because how do they yeah. goddamn no do you know what i mean yeah. uh i mean that's the beauty of working from home you can't allow someone to work from home and then spy on them as long as they're getting the job done right they're they doing their be, work Shouldn't be an if issue. They get, if they're getting Ooh. the job done, it should be fine. All right, guys, let's talk about Manscaped really quick. You know the deal by now, the world's leader in below the waist grooming. Okay, the Lawnmower 4.0 is the latest and greatest iteration of their game changing lawnmower. Okay, it's been through four upgrades. Okay, it's got the skin safe technology, it allows you to trim your franken beans, your crown jewels, your meat and two veg, whatever you want to call them. You're going to get it nice and smooth, and you're not going to be leaking blood, you're not going to hurt yourself, nick yourself, or cut yourself. Okay. Also, you can get the Manscaped 4.0 as part of the performance package, though. The Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer, okay, that's going to be in there. You're also going to get the weed whacker for those nose and ear hairs. Okay, you can trim those up nicely. You get the Crop Preserver, which comes with the Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner, okay? But you can also get the Platinum Package. It has everything that I just mentioned in the best-selling performance package, plus Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner, and Ultra Premium Deodorant. All the Manscaped shower gear is sulfate-free, vegan, and made to leave your skin feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. Also, if you fancy it, if you want to keep those toenails in check, they've got the nail clippers, they've got the new body buffer, and over a dozen other products that you could use in your bathroom. And yes, I know you're saying, wow, Mike's beard looks nice and trimmed. They also do a beard trimmer. They just sent it to me. Thank you very much, Manscaped. Go to the website, manscaped.com. All kinds of men's grooming products, whatever you need, they have you covered. But I suggest the performance package or the platinum package, they will have you covered. But whatever you do, whatever you order, be sure to use the code BISPING. That's going to get you 20% off and free shipping. So manscaped.com is the website. The code is BISPING, 20% off and free shipping. Your balls are going to thank you. Speaking of doing inappropriate things oh. on the job, I don't okay. know if you guys talked about this. I don't even know when it came out. Did you see about that cop from Tennessee, that female cop that was I like didn't. getting getting gang banged by like five other police officers and like sleeping oh with cops God. and stuff on duty serious? like at the police station <laughs> yeah oh my, I, I did it but brian if you can just google yeah. that real quick i probably should have sent that in before 
And oh, I, I, yeah. I need a visual. I don't know what it is for me to give my uh, in-depth analysis. I need to picture this woman. I need to see what she looks like. There's Harrington straight to Mommy. it in the chat with the link. Brian. He already had it ready to go. Where, oh, where yeah. was this? To be fair, I was in Tennessee. I had this story, and I was like, I don't know if this makes sense for Believe You Me. <laughs> of course well, it well, does. Anthony, Anthony brought it on. So that's the lady in question there. Is it? There's, yeah. the, there's the multiple It was guys like all the guys. <laughs> oh that's only God. some of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's not even uh, all of them. Five officers have been fired, including her. Another three have been suspended, including the head of the canine unit. Oh, my God. What a Jeez, nice I mean, lady. That's and I heard so her husband. embarrassing. <laughs> I read today that her husband's sticking by her side. I mean, that's yeah. one hell of a relationship. He says that I mean, it's one thing. It one thing, you know, they can figure it out. Do you know what I mean? There's a little, they've been unfaithful or whatever. But when you get caught getting blasted of five men at work, do you know what I mean? That's a and hell of a Some of them were together, I think. There was like oh, a... God. I was reading this story. I was so... I was been so weirded out by this, but I was reading the story and it was saying they were like in a hot tub or something and doing their thing and then she was like taking unloaded guns and like pulling the trigger to her head and i was like wow this lady should not be a cop let alone like she seems like she's crazy anyways let alone sleeping mental. with everyone that she works with yeah it's crazy and she's mental she's mental nice lady, anyway, and here's, sure. an, here's another very one, giving though, individual oh of course doing a great community service stress you know, it's just stress to relief people. to her co-workers it is. It is. She's concerned for them. Uh, here's one that Harrington put in. And I, I don't know where to start with this. Former Bellator fighter and brother of Kevin Lee, Keith Lee, who I'll be honest, I'm, I'm shame on me, perhaps. Shame, Bell. Brought that back. That's an old school touch for you there. Um, I didn't even know he had a brother called Keith Lee. I didn't even know he fought for Bellator. He's blown up on TikTok. He's blown up on oh, TikTok yeah. as a food reviewer. Harrington, tell me why I should give a damn about this, please. <laughs> I know nothing about it. Well, I was thinking since you guys are both in and out of Las Vegas so much, you would go and try the uh, the pizza shop that he apparently single-handedly saved. So his deal is he'll go into failing small businesses and give an honest review of the food. And typically when he gives like a, yeah, that's pretty good, business blows up for these people so this this one pizza place in las vegas personally credits him with saving their business oh nice nice well good what's for the, him that's what's amazing the what, what's the pizza place called what's your favorite kind of pizza around today i'll pretty much eat anything mike no but if you had to pick one it's your last pizza you're gonna die right there's a gun to your head remember just like before same gun same person you're like what is um, this weird torture you're doing to me I went to, uh, when I was working in Bristol, I went to, um, what is like, it's like the pizza capital. The toppings, the Anthony, the toppings. We don't need, we don't care it where matters. it's from. What? Pepe's in New Haven. Pepe's. It was a pepperoni pizza from Pepe's. It was so good. I'm a pepperoni pizza guy. You can get stuffed yeah, crust. I'm in. Oh, I don't like the stuffed crust. I, I like it thin. Oh, no. It's got to be a nice thick pizza. Oh, I like it. I like, I like it thin. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Um, Pineapple on a pizza? No. Get out of here. I don't mind it. Ham and pineapple or Hawaiian, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. It's okay. Why? It's not my favorite, but I don't mind it. That's, you, know, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. You, well, you, you know, would. I'm an international <laughs> exotic guy, but that's the type of I, shit that I... I, I just I, judged for, you. For, for, for one show, well, judge away, brother. Judge <laughs> away. Maybe you need to... Maybe I'm judging you for your unsophisticated palate. You know what I mean? The my people down there in Arkansas... You can't put fruit on a pizza. Yes, well, you can evidently, you can't. and people no. do it, and it's known no. as a Hawaiian not, pizza. Not have my respect. Well, <laughs> Just well, it, it is, well, no, 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 you've offended me. You've offended me. This is the one time that I like lately. Harrington used to do it, but then just lately I've been sending in a few. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. On this occasion, I didn't again. And this is what we have to talk about. But one thing we will talk about uh, is the fights at the weekend. Sean Strickland getting it done against mm -hmm. Nazar Dean Emavov. He's sticking with that Frenchie line all the way through, even at the post-fight press conference. He's dagged his Danny, but whatever. He's fighting out of France. What did you make of the fight, Anthony? Uh, I thought Sean Strickland did a good job at making some adjustments. Um, just lead because the Cannoneer fight was very close. I think you could have gone either way with it. I initially kind of I thought I, I thought Strickland won the Cannoneer fight, but I understand how you could have judged it the other way. I think just with it being short notice, being a little bit heavier, I thought it was smart of him to not cut all the way to 85 because he's a big dude. Mm -hmm. um, 
but he was he was kind of looking for the finish a little more. He was swinging bigger. He was he looked like he was putting more effort into this fight than he has in a while. Um, I on four or five days notice, whatever it was, against a yeah. hot prospect and up and comer like uh, Nasserdine. I I thought it was an incredible performance. Um, I, I I thought he did the right thing to make the right adjustments. Uh, I thought it was really funny seeing him after the the judges' scorecards were ready. Walked over oh, to each yeah. judge and thanked them all. He ran over. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought that was funny. No fair play to him, as you say, stepping up on a few days' notice. That's the beauty of being a guy like Sean that's training all the time. You know what I mean? A lot of people and younger fighters can learn from this. You know, until you've made it, until you're at a point where you're financially secure or that you're, you know, in your, at least in your own mind, a goddamn legend. You know, you've got to be in the gym. You've got to be mm-hmm. staying consistent. You've got to be trying to approve, improve. And you can clearly see for Sean, you know, he obviously probably took a few days off after the last fight. And in the gym, I mean, he lives for it, doesn't he? He's that type of guy. He loves a mm-hmm. bit of violence. It's probably the highlight of his day or his week, getting to beat some people up in the sparring room uh, because he, he is like that. So, yeah, it was a good good fight. Great performance, as you say, coming in at 205. He probably could have made 185 if he really wanted to. Mm-hmm. But it was smart to say, you know what? No, I'm not going to cut weight. I've got enough going on last minute. I mean, that's why he rocked up with the glasses on because he had the eye test. The eye test stuff, yeah. The dilated pupils. You got all that stuff to do last minute. You don't want to complicate things by throwing in a weight cut as well. And good for him, you know, and he had to bring it. He had to bring it because if he'd have lost that, that would have been three in a row. You know what I'm saying? And it's not a good position to be. So well done to Sean. Unlucky to Imavov. Imavov looked good. He looked dangerous on occasion here and there, but Sean, for the most part, he was one step ahead. Mixed in a couple of takedowns and stuff like that. Imavov's good. It's a good win. Good scalp to have. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I look like at times, uh, Imovov had some. I think maybe some of that weight kind of weared on him a little bit. And being in there with a guy that's as as elusive and hard to hit as as Strickland is, and I, I think he's going to learn a lot because he kind of just seen the you know a little bit of the top of the mountain. I think he's going to grow a lot from that. I think Sean did a good job of you know pushing him up against the fence, which is something he hasn't been doing recently is because you know you hear over and over and over how good of a grappler he is and, and how big of oh, a pain in the ass he is in the clinch and he just doesn't do it a whole bunch so i think he weighed on him a little bit put put a you know put those extra 20 pounds on him and and slowed him down um i think if imovov would have had a little more gas and uh, and could deal with the pressure of someone like strickland a little bit better i think he would have been more successful but he'll, he'll learn man he's young he's he, he's he's got a lot of fight left in him i i, I still i still expect big things out of ima bob let me ask you this you're, you're you're a man who loves a good tattoo anthony mm-hmm. you got many tattoos all over your body yeah. many on your hands back where's the most obscure place you've got a tattoo the most obscure do you have one on your pp not yet would you do that? Um, is that something that you're going to work on? Uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to work on it. I mean, if I probably would. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, it's not I would. work on it, I think. Yeah, yeah, like I would. It's not something I, I got like on the books and I'm preparing for. But, you know, yeah. if I was, well, if, if drinks, you I mean, were to, I was well, there, you know. Yeah, when, you, probably. when you come to get the said penis tattoo, what would that be? Would it be like an arrow just pointing to the end? What would you get on? Be a fucking small arrow. <laughs> <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't take very long, that's for sure. It wouldn't be a Francis Ngannou arrow. That's for <laughs> damn sure. My God, you'd run out of ink. The reason I bring this up is because uh, what about a face tattoo? Would you ever consider a face tattoo? No, I think my wife would leave me. That's kind of always yeah. been the thing. If I got my face or my neck tattooed, she's not all about it. Well, it's Everything else is fair game. game. Izzy does not care. You might have saw this. He's got uh, some, he's got the dragon tattooed on his forehead, well, above his eyebrow in Arabic. What's it say? It says, apparently, it translates to to dragon. I'll be honest, it kind of, he can pull it off. It it, kind of looks cool. Yeah, he's a flamboyant guy and he's very, Mm -hmm. you know, he's a little bit extra in his style and all the rest of it. And Izzy pulls it off. I never in a million years could I have dragon tattooed right there and just walk about in my day-to-day life without getting ridiculed from the masses. Yes, Harrington. So he actually showed like one uh, little piece of it at, at the end there, like a flash. It's a nod to an anime character who mm, has like a tattoo over his thing. And he does like this and he gets power from the from the tattoo. So maybe that's what's <sighs> missing for the third fight or fourth fight with Pereira. Yeah, well, I'm sure if Strickland saw that, he'd yeah. have something to say. 
Yeah, I, you, you can guarantee that. That's for sure. Um, what kind of girl yeah. man watches anime, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, he can pull it off. I couldn't pull it off. I'd look stupid. No, as shit, he can. But. He can. Harrington, give us a uh, mixed martial arts story because my I've got I, I've upgraded all my system here. I've got two big monitors and all the rest of it. I've got a new computer. It's a PC instead of a Mac, and it's it's. It's a very, very different system. And every, I touch one monitor and it disappears off somewhere. I'm like, that's why I'm looking around left and right like this. I'm like, where the hell did the notes go? They've disappeared. <laughs> so Harrington, I'll let you cue this one up, buddy. Uh, probably the 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 biggest story outside of the Cyril Ghosn news. UFC 286 officially has a main event. Uh, Usman versus Edwards three, as you know, the champ came on here last week and said that was likely to be the fight. It also has a co-main event. Justin Gaethje versus Raphael Fazit. Yeah. Mm. Let me ask you this, Anthony. Did you happen to see the appearance from the champ Leon Edwards last weekend in your yeah. hiatus? Yeah. Yeah, I don't lie. Know. Don't yeah. lie. <laughs> no, okay. I'm sorry. Training was crazy. And no, you know how it is. Silly. The coaches, my silly. coach I'm changed joking. the training I, time. I do oh, not whatever. expect you to watch episodes that you're not on. I'm joking. Uh, shout out Leon Edwards, though, because if you do watch, if you do get bored, he was awesome. He really was. And I think, uh, Brian, would you mind cutting out the Leon Edwards? Because sometimes I go, right about now. Right about now. But we got uh, we got Leon Edwards to do it. So we've now we've got an authentic uh, Jamaican right about now, you know, uh, but he was awesome. So shout out Leon and thank you again for your time. So that's been made official that him and Kamaru three is going down for sure. But co-main event, just engage it. Raphael Fazeev. I'm just going to start off the conversation. I'll throw it to you in one second. I think that this needs to be the fight where we get to see some of Justin's wrestling because Fazeev, no. I'm not saying that Justin can't beat him. On the feet. I'm not saying it would be foolhardy for him to fight him toe to toe, but he is such an accredited wrestler. It would be foolish not to sprinkle in some takedowns. It, he's just leaving such a big part of his game and just leaves it in the back. I I, I, I very much agree with you. Like I agree with you. Mike. I'm not saying he can't strike with Fazeev and can't no. beat him there, but why beat everybody where they're the best? Why are we, why do you do that? You know, like I get it against Oliveira. You, you don't want to wrestle against that guy. Chandler's going to be kind of the same. Chandler's going to be a tough guy to wrestle against, but if you're going to wrestle and, and, and at this point in Gaethje's career, I want him to, I, I just, I want him to put himself in the best position to win, you know, at, at least bring your full, your full game. And he just hasn't been doing that. And, and, you know, I, I I look forward to seeing Gaethje shoot some takedowns, get some big ground and pound, at least mix it in a little bit. I'm not saying you got to slow your game down and and be super boring and fight in a way that you don't you you don't necessarily enjoy. But uh, I think was, he would be more dangerous on his feet if he mixed in some takedowns. Without question, without question. What was his last fight, Gaethje? Was it Charles Oliveira? Have we not seen him since then? I don't I believe think it was. so. Right? I think it was. So yeah. So I'm just looking at the, the record of uh, Fazeev. Last time out, knocked out Rafael Dos Sanjos, knocked out oh, Brad Riddell yeah. before that decision, Bobby Green, knocked out Moicano in round one, uh, beat Margie Casey on Fire Island, I called that one. And Margie Casey, uh, this is before Margie Casey was wrestling everybody like he is mm -hmm. now. Margie Casey's phenomenal on the feet, and he beat him. Uh, so is Brad Riddell. So is Brad Bedell. I mean, there's some good. He's on a one, two, three, four, six fight win streak in the UFC. Alex White, March Casey, Hanato Moicano, Bobby Green, Brad Bedell, and Rafael Dos Anjos. So for Fazeev, this is a massive opportunity now. Massive opportunity to get against a guy as highly ranked as Justin Gagey, a fan favorite. Everybody loves the human highlight reel. If he can get a win over him, he is knocking on that door as a next or as a potential title challenger down the line. So, yeah, Gagey, we love Gagey. We love the way he fights. We love the excitement he brings to the table. And part of that is because he does throw caution to the wind and says, let's just have a row. Let's mm -hmm. go for it. But this time I would like to see him be tactical. But it comes down to it. Will... And I don't, I don't know if I'm phrasing this the correct way, but will his ego allow that? Because I think, and what do you think about this, Anthony? When it comes to us as fighters, we're like, no, I'm going to stand and I'm going to beat you at your own game. And that's our ego talking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you put that in check, you think, well, the easiest way to beat this guy is to use some of the years and years and years of wrestling that I studied in high school and college. 
You know what I mean? Because he's a, he's a tie boxer. Sure, I'm sure he knows how to stop some takedowns and get back to his feet. But he's not half the wrestler that Justin Gagey is. No, he's not. And I, I don't. I think I agree with you. I don't know what to call it because I don't want to. Because when you say ego, you, it, it seems like a negative thing that you're saying. It and sounds. Not, it sounds insulting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why I said I'm not sure if it's the right word. But I and I don't mean it in in an insulting way. But it, can he check his his craving for that that fan? appeal you know what i mean can he can he check that craving for just an all-out battle and war because th- when you have the power that gaichi has you always can believe that you can shut one, you can shut someone off with one so uh, you know one big shot dropping somebody with one of these it's way it's easier a lot, well, well it's way easier it takes way less effort yeah. and it's way more satisfying yeah. you know what i mean a lot yeah, by a lot Tell me about the like for me. I can think of a couple right now, but I've probably said them a million times. For you, when you think of what I'm talking about here, you know when you throw a punch and you feel the connection on the knuckle through the glove, mm-hmm. you know, and you're like, you get that feedback. And like for me, instantly, I can think of a few when I knocked out Rockhold. That'd be one of them that instantly comes to mind. But what is one situation like that for you where you've landed a shot and you're like, oh, baby, baby, good luck getting up from that one. Yeah, one was a one was an elbow and one was a punch. The the elbow was a guy, his name was uh, Elvis Mutopchik. It was my first bonus in the UFC. You know, we were kind of going back and forth, and I was getting the better of him, but he we kind of came to a clinch, and he reached up, like reached up for my neck, and I just went right over the top of his, of his of, of, like of his tie collar, and it was a nasty elbow. Like, and he just, you know, his whole body went limp. His legs kind of just went, it just, you feel it, you feel it right away. And oh, it's then, beautiful. The punch was was Shogun. I, I kind of got backed up oh. to the fence and just a nasty one too. And and right away, you know, I remember thinking, why, do you, why have you got to do that to a nice legend like Shogun? I yeah, like he, he was uh, he was trying respect. to do the same shit to me. Have a bit of respect. <laughs> uh, I remember laying in the punch, and in my head, I remember thinking, no way, no, like you you know when something lands big like that, like that guy is going down, and it was kind of a delayed reaction. And he just kind of took a step back. And I remember being like kind of afraid, like, oh, God, if he can take one of those, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Mm. And then his whole body kind of went, you know, it was just delayed a little bit and he went down. But, yeah, it was that was that was another one. You just yeah, know. Yeah. It, just is, know. It, it is. It is. It might sound weird to some people. It might make us sound violent. You know what I mean? Or like with some kind of that like we have an issue with us. And I think maybe we do. Maybe we do. But there is, you can't beat it. It is, you know, because listen, we sign up to the life of being a fighter. When you throw a shot and it might be a punch, an elbow, a kick, a knee, whatever it is. When you land a solid blow and it's flush, it is a great feeling that maybe some people can't understand. Harrington, uh, give me the lowdown though, because... Fazeev has been booked, and I think that's a tremendous co-main event for London. And I think the people of the UK, you know, because having guys like Justin Gage is is massive for the people that have to buy tickets. They want to see the American superstars as well. Mm-hmm. There is tremendous skill and tremendous fighters and a great roster of athletes from the UK. You know what I mean? But they do want to see those fan favorites, people like you, Justin Poyers, you Justin Gages, et cetera, et cetera. Now they've got Kamara Usman coming over. They've got Justin Gage in the co-main event. That's fantastic. But Harrington, set the scene here because Fazeev is coming over as well. And Phuket top team, who I happen to know with, and I didn't hear this, nice uh, investigative journalism here, Harrington, but Phuket top team seem to think that Fazeev owes them some money. If you're there. I am. Uh, so it was in response to uh, Rafael Molcano uh, hopped on uh, Twitter and was like, man, I can't believe uh, Fazeev is an underdog here in this fight. It's crazy. Phuket top team responded saying that, Phuket, uh, Phuket, Phuket, sorry. Um, so yeah, Fazeev owes three months rent uh, for over three years now uh, for to, to a Thai house owner. Uh, we've written him multiple times. He agrees that he owes the money. He just doesn't want to pay it. So they're asking Justin Gaethje to go collect for them. <laughs> three months oh. of rent? I three mean, months Thailand, of rent, yeah. Which is like $9. Was that, yeah, I was going to say. Was he owing like 18 bucks? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Have you ever been to Thailand, Anthony? Never. I'd love to, though. I'd love Dude, to. I'm going this year. I'm going. Come with us. I'll Bring go with fam. you. Hell oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I got to go. Oh, it's it's I, an amazing place. Yeah, I would love to go to Thailand. Would love yeah, that. I first went 2004. I went out there for three months. 
like just doing Thai boxing and whatnot. And then since then, mm-hmm. I've been many times. When it comes to the culture of training, it's just amazing in Thailand. But yeah, when you go out there, Phuket top team, when I was there, they looked after me. They got me a truck to drive and all the rest of it. We did some training with my son and whatnot. That'd be amazing. BYM, live from Thailand. Right. Let's go. Boyd, yeah. Phuket top team, if you see this, hook it up. The Lionheart yeah. and the Count are coming over. Let's, Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, that'd be f- Oh, Harrington. hey, how was, how was Paul Craig? Oh, he was awesome. The Paul Craig's always great. He's always great. What did he say, Harrington and Brian? I forget regarding Anthony. I don't think he had anything bad to say. He has nothing against you whatsoever. No, Just no, remind me, Harrington. Cool. He he accused you of a bit of, of Q jumping, is uh is how he put it. Yeah. If you were to get the uh the next title fight when he has the win over Jamal. Q jumping. Harrington. Stirring the pot. Because mm. mm. like mean... in, in in his main they when he beats, who's it called? Johnny Walker at the weekend, right? Mm-hmm. That puts him in that eight, is one eight of his last nine, right? So if he beats Johnny Walker at the weekend, right, then that puts him in front of the queue because he's the only gay to beat Jamal Hill. And if Jamal Hill wins, then it makes logical sense. What do you say to that, Anthony? I, I mean, I, I can see the argument. I can definitely see the argument. <laughs> it's it's um, a good argument. It's a good argument. I mean, it's just, it, you just got, I mean, like, you got to look at the rankings. He lost his last fight, and he looked. I, I listen, Mr. Paul Craig. I love you, but you looked a little stupid in your last fight. Like oh, he, he, had a t- he had a tough. He had a tough fight. He had a tough fight. He had a tough time with Vulcan Ozdemir. Who is this who is, is a tough you, guy? Anthony. The tough guy to fight. You don't shame the guests. Shame. I'm not Anthony. shaming him. I'm not shaming him. You, you shamed him. Shame. Well, shame he, him. It, okay, he might be upset about hearing that, but. In his in his own head, he'd be like, mm, "He's kind of right." <laughs> well, well, well. To be fair, time. to 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 be fair, no, no, you're right because he did look, you know, he was kind of, was you know, he, he he no, he but he relies heavily on his grappling. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I said when I was commentating that fight against who was it, Volkan Uzdemir, I was saying whilst that fight was speaking going of gone, shaming the guest, did he list, Did he watch his fight back and listen to your commentary? Well, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm getting because I reached out to him a while ago. To uh, I wasn't talking shit in the commentary, but I was saying, listen, maybe he needs to round out his skill set a bit more because when plan A doesn't work, you've always got to have a plan B, potentially a plan C, you know, or even a D if you're mental. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I first DM'd him, he never responded, right, for quite some time, for quite yeah. some time. So, I, you know, I don't like he to respond. I, I don't like to send another one. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. And then I did a thing on BT Sport with him and he was on there. I said, I said, Paul, I said, I shot you a DM. I said, I hope you weren't offended. And he was like, no, mate, don't be bloody stupid. Don't be crazy. I used to be do, able to do a good Scottish accent. It's gone out the window. But yeah, no, that, that'll be a good one. Him versus Johnny Walker. What do you think about that, Anthony? I think Paul Craig wins. Johnny's, they've, they've kind of taken away what's made Johnny Walker He's lost what's I, I don't yeah. want to say they've taken it away. He's lost what's made him so so dangerous. And it's just unpredictability and his, you know, him just being an athlete and explosive. And now he's trying to break down and be super technical. And he's just not, yep. he's just not there. He's just not there. He never has been. That is precisely what I said. That's what made him great. Being unpredictable, throwing out these weird, you know, unorthodox movements. Mm-hmm. And then he catches people and they get put to sleep because he's so wildly athletic and explosive. Taming that and bringing it down to orthodox and just a jab, right hand. That's not how he fights. You've got you to try and contain that madness a little bit, but still mm-hmm. not, not, not dampen the fire completely. You know what I mean? Still got still to let it burn bright, Anthony. Yeah, and, and, and Paul is tough. He's, he's tough. He's a dog. He's not going to shy away from a little bit of fire. And, and I think he's going to wade in. He's going to close the distance. I think if they end up on the ground, he's an incredible grappler. Uh, and I think he does pretty much whatever he wants to with Johnny Walker on the ground. And Johnny's not a fantastic wrestler. You know, he doesn't get taken down a bunch because he's so explosive and athletic. But I, I just, you know, I, I think they're going to end up in grappling exchanges. And Paul Craig wins those 100 out of 100 times. Yeah, yeah, more than likely right. Uh, I'm looking here. How to no- Oh, go on, bud. I was going to say one other thing Paul Craig said is assuming he comes out of that Johnny Walker fight, not too, you know, not, not injured or anything crazy. It's not too crazy of a turnaround for him to be available for UFC 286 in March. And he did have one name of a guy he'd like to fight. And he's on this show right now. Anthony Smith. He wants to fight me. <laughs> yeah. um, what would you say to that? 
If, I, w- if I would the, say, I would say, say theoretically, he wins at the weekend. You don't get to step in and be a replacement. And instead of fighting March 11th, which I think you were planning on, they mm-hmm. say March 18th, London for the believers, Anthony. For the believers, what do you say? Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. the 11th or the 18th. I'm good with. I'm yeah. totally good with it. So it, you know, I I hope that Paul Craig does his job. He goes in there, comes out relatively unscathed and and not too banged up and and we can fight the 11th or the 18th i'm good i'm down with either date of course i want to fight in london but i also enjoy a quick flight to vegas which is three hours so i'm good i'm good either way yeah yeah no absolutely so you know the the traveling for a fight it's okay when you're going on vacation or whatever but when it's a fight the travel just becomes such a pain in the ass Mm -hmm. and then the time changes and then the difference in diet and all the rest of it you know what i'm saying like down in brazil Vegas will what, be easier. what are you gonna eat down in Brazil? Um, Have you given any thought to that? Because no, not, not too much. When you go somewhere and you've got to order off the menu, in a, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't have a chef, some people do that. But if you've got to order off the menu, it can be very difficult. Yeah, well, leading up until the fight, uh, the PI is doing all my meals, so it'd be it'd be pretty much just the UFC feeding me. But other than that, you know, I, I definitely want to hit like a you know one of those Brazilian steakhouses. What's that? Charrascaria. What the fuck is that? That's what you call it. That's what you're talking about. The the the, the Mexican barbecue places. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I I want to go to one of those. I don't remember what they're. Yeah, yeah, with the little pegs. Yeah, you turn it upside down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to hit one of those. Uh, the best steak I've ever had in my entire life was in Brazil. Um, they just they they cook really good food. So I'll have a really nice meal on Friday, but I'm gonna be getting skinny all week. I'm bloody jealous because like you, you should come you, now, now well yeah i just jump on a flight uh, yeah, yeah. Don't, stop saying that you do that all the time like <laughs> mike why don't you just come why don't you just come when you're just in come. new york mike come it's my one weekend off guys uh, never mind the wife and kids it's going up to new york is it a work thing no i'm just gonna go hang out not that i'm a pussy with little asshole but you know what i mean i can't just jump on a plane and fly down to brazil you could you know what I'm just saying? come I, come as one of my corner men i got an extra spot well i'll just say it like this one, the fight's probably not going to happen. <laughs> right, but I still need a cornerman just in case. Well, just just grab ha- Harrington will do. Would you allow <laughs> Harrington in the corner? No. Yeah, I don't blame you. All right, let's just talk about FitBod really quick. Listen, we've talked about FitBod. This thing is absolutely fantastic, okay? We all want to go to the gym. We want to feel better. We want to look better. We want to be healthier. Oftentimes, going to the gym it can be very boring. You don't know what you're doing. You haven't got direction. You can't afford a personal trainer. Well, for less than the cost of one personal session with a trainer, you can sign up to FitBod for a year. FitBod is an, is an app. Okay, and it's smart workout app that creates custom dynamic exercise programs based on your goals, your experience and your equipment. Okay, you might have a full gym. It'll give you workouts based on that. If you're in the park, in your garage, whatever you've got, it'll give you workouts based upon that. And of course, there is 4K video on there. So each exercise, because sometimes, you know, just being told what they are, you don't know how to do that. The app will walk you through it. Of course, it works on both iOS and Android devices. The app is also very, very easy to use. As I say, video tutorials make learning the new exercise an absolute breeze. The algorithm uses data and analytics so you can scientifically build your next best workout and maximize results. You can see your muscle usage, recovery, achievements, and workout streaks right there in the app. You are in control with workouts designed just for you so you get exactly what you need. Listen, stale in the gym, looking for imagination, looking for motivation, looking for new workouts, new exercises, just something fresh. you got to check this out. Go to, oh, by the way, the offer is ridiculous, okay? All you got to do is go to fitbod.me slash believe. You will get 25% of your subscription or you can try the app out for free. I mean, if that's not a good deal, I don't know what is. If you're looking for inspiration, you can do it here with a two-week free trial. Go to fitbod.me slash believe. You'll get 25% off your subscription, and you get to try the app out for free when you sign up now at fitbod.me slash believe. Harrington, uh, what is uh, Jake Paul and Nate Diaz? What is the association here other than Jake Paul offering him a two-fight deal? What, What is this about his father or something? Yeah, so Nate posted a video uh, that showed uh, Jake's father coming up to Nate and essentially just praising him, right? Like, you know, you got that dog in you. You're you're a hell of a fighter. You're, you know, incredible. Just bigging him up, right? Being very friendly and cordial in person. 
Then wearing the same shirt <laughs> in the uh, first video, he went on Sean O'Malley's podcast and just trashed Nate's skill. Was like <laughs> Jake would absolutely destroy him. Nate's a, a an also ran. He was never even that good in the UFC. Just couldn't have been more two faced. Oh, <laughs> that's kind of a, that's kind of a dickhead move. <sighs> Well, what are you going to do? Jake Paul's dad's going to Jake Paul's dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's going to say that. He's probably saying that to Nate to try and get him to take the fight. But then he's going to say what he says publicly. We were talking last week, and I'm not going to be that guy that reveals direct messages on publicly. I'm not going to be that guy, but we were on the phone. Uh, Jake Paul messaged me out the blue last week, and we went back and forth for a while. He was mad. He was angry. He was talking so much shit. And I said to him, I said, you know, without going into too many details, I just basically said, Jake, I never said anything bad about you. I just said, you're yet to fight a boxer. You're yet to fight someone your size. That's all it is. And he kept going on. And by the end, it all ended in a kind of a choreal place. I said, look, Jake, listen, you're 25 years old. You know, God bless. Good, good, good for you. I hope you do great things. You know what I mean? But you just get to fight someone. And it ended in a decent place. So I don't want to be that guy and talking shit and being two-faced. But, uh, my God, he came after me. He said, why are you talking so much shit? I said, I'm not talking shit about you personally. I don't know you. I've never met you. But, but you can't say that you're fighting boxers. You're not about fighting Canelo. You get to fight a boxer. That was all it was. But So we had a bit of fun there. And that passed the time for a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah I... I say lots of bad things about Jake Paul all the time. Nothing personal because, again, I don't know him personally. Um, I think he's an asshole. I, I think that he sucks. I don't think he's very good. And I, I, just, I, I don't know why he's so offended by that. Like the issue, I think, with MMA fighters, the guys like you and me talking bad about him is like I bet he gets so mad because like what the fuck are you going to do about it? Like you're going <laughs> to... You're going to be mad on Twitter. You're going to talk shit on Instagram. You're going to send mean messages. Like that's about all you're going to do because he would never, ever say half of that shit to your face or to my face. He just would never, yeah. would never do that. Like that's got to be really frustrating. Like if it's another YouTube nerd or, or another, you know, guy that's not a very good boxer and, you know, a Dylan Danis or something like I'm sure he has no problem talking shit to those guys, but like, what the hell is he going to do to us? Like <laughs> Dylan Dennis is nothing. another one. He's a, d d so I do lives now and again on my YouTube channel. Has and he been Dylan recently? Dylan Dennis always pops up, always pops up in there, right? And it is Dylan Dennis, right? Because everyone's like, "You're crazy, Bisping." If you think that's Dylan Dennis, so I said, "Right, if it is you, Dylan, message me on Instagram." And sure enough, he messages me, right? And he says, "Do you want to get this interview?" And, and, I, and I will do this because this isn't us arguing or whatever. But he's a weird guy because he pulled out of that fight with KSI, which I yeah. thought was stupid. We just, you know, listen, KSI, whatever, he could have made some money there because he's got a big following because he's a YouTuber and all the rest of it. He says, he says, oh, here's, here's Dylan. He said, yeah, let's get this done. I said, all right, let me figure it out. I'll come back to you. And I forgot. Right, <laughs> it wasn't at the yeah. top of my priorities. Let's figure out the Dylan <laughs> Dallas interview. And he comes back, You scared to talk? And I'm like, No, sorry, let's do it next week. He goes, Yeah, sure. And I forgot again. And then he goes, Oh, so you're all talk. I went, Oh, yeah, sorry. This coming week, how's Tuesday? He says, Cool. And I go, What's your email? And then nothing, no response. There. They're, they're, they're weird. This, uh, we should, we should try to generation. get him on Thursday. Let's get him on. Let's get him. Well, I did. I messaged him. Well, let's message him again right now, live on the right. show. Let's get Dylan. him on Thursday. I'd love to. I'd love to really hear. Are you going to do I, the show Thursday? Fuck yeah. Oh, baby. I thought we were having a, a, a non Anthony episode. Well, I mean, I mean, my plan is to do it. The time change is going to mess with us a little bit. So we oh, might have to. Oh, oh. You might have to be. You might have to be a little bit flexible, but. Well, I'm, I'm flexible, but I see what's going on here. You're just painting the groundwork, right? So you get the credit for doing the show, but you're not actually going to do it. You're like, I'm going to try guys. I'm going to try. No, as but long like, as, as long as we can, the time difference in the jet lag uh, and the I'm, diet. I'm not too worried about the, about the time change of the jet lag. It's as long. Cause I think it's four hours time difference. So like I'll, I'll do it late as long. I, I think we can figure oh, it bro. out. Bro. I'm doing a live BT sport Wayne show on oh, Friday shit. morning. So the, 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 uh, 
the tension waiting to see if Glover and Jamal make it to the scale, yeah. whether they do or not. And then Anthony Smith walks out, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. <laughs> but the point I'm bringing this up is that we're doing a live Wayne show. My call time is 3.45 in the morning because it's oh, in no. Rio de Janeiro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 3.45 oh, no. in the goddamn morning. I'm At least you don't have to go far. Well, I just walk down here like I always do. Never leave the bloody house these days. Harrington, what else are we missing in the notes, buddy? Anything worth mentioning? Anything big? Uh, yeah, one thing that I didn't put in the notes, I just put it in the chat here. Uh, Patty Pimblett is going to be having ankle surgery, uh, so he won't be available for UFC 286 in March. Yeah, it's not exactly massive breaking news. I saw that a couple of days ago. It said, though, which I thought was quite confusing, he's not having surgery till March. But then I saw another interview or another article that I read, and it never mentioned that. Do you know which is true, Harrington? Because if he's not having surgery till March, that seems a little weird. That can't be accurate. We're in January. Yeah, that'd be weird. Why would you wait till March? What, what's uh, what's the stance on that, Harrington? Did you see anything? And I'm repeating myself for the believers. Sorry. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm looking into it now. I am reading the same thing that you were that he is planning the surgery uh for March. Why yeah, would you plan the surgery? That's why, weird. Why would you do that? I don't know. I don't know. Gives him a little time out, I guess. You should, you should reach out to him. <laughs> yeah, I will do. I maybe I'll go via Ariel. Them two have a great relationship these days. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to look in the notes. Then Harrington, let's look at these non MMAs before we get to some questions. We don't want to keep Anthony too long today. Uh, here's we'll, we'll take a vault, Anthony, because you haven't looked. We've done number okay. one. We did the former Bellator fighter. Okay. Two. This is what Harrington puts in for the podcast. I don't know what much of a talking point this will be. Ring, you know the front door, the ring things. Mm -hmm. Ring of us have invented a security drone that will fly around your house while you're away to keep an eye on things. I know about this because Luke has told me, because he's 12 and stuff like that excites him. Here's another one. A man used AI, artificial intelligence, and Amazon services to create a children's book out of thin air in under a week. In fact, I was watching some videos on that one. Do you want to talk about that, Anthony? Yeah, let's talk about that one. I was in the gym this morning. It's lifting weights, you know, it's part of my lifestyle. Even with the, the broken at, back, Anthony. At the meathead gym? N not a meathead gym. LA Fitness. Oh, okay. Anything but a meathead gym. My LA Fitness, it's, oh, God. If you go in the morning, there's people, and God bless them. I'm so proud of them. Old people working mm -hmm. out. But it's full of, old, some of them have an oxygen tank. Right? <laughs> they do. And Are like, you serious? It's a, I, sw I swear to God, you will see multiple oxygen tanks. And I've got two things to say. One part of me is like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Well done. I mm -hmm. salute you. At your age and your condition, you're still doing your best. You're getting out there. You're working out a little nice and gentle. It's beautiful. It's be it really is. And I commend them so much. The other part of me is like, get the fuck out. <laughs> this isn't exactly inspiring me to kill it. Do you know what I mean? I need to yeah. find another gym. Do you know what I mean? Right. There's like two trains of thoughts. Um, but yeah, I was in the gym this morning and I was listening. Do you know what chat GB GPT is? You probably don't. Mm -mm. Well, it relates to what uh, Harrington put in here. And Harrington, you jump on in a second. Chat GPT is like a, a, an artificial intelligence program that you can ask it questions and it will just give it you straight away. So Jordan Peterson, that, that uh, uh, psychologist you know yeah. jordan peterson yeah. right yeah he's awesome he said and he was on joe rogan podcast that's what i was listening to he said uh they asked him because he does a book called 12 he has a book called 12 rules of life mm -hmm. he said i want you to write out uh the 13th rule the 13th rule in my style it took it three seconds three seconds boom straight away there, there was a 13th chapter and when he read it he was like, oh, my God, this sounds like me. So they mimicked and, and, and imitated the style, the words, the vocabulary, just like Jordan Peterson would, and spat it out back at him in three goddamn seconds. The human race is, we're done. That's, that's insane. It's so insane. Did, and then there was a bunch of other examples as well. Three seconds, three seconds. In three seconds, I forget some of them now, but it, it's just unreal, Harrington. Michael so what this sounded like me. <laughs> oh yeah no i know i thought i i knew that's where brian would jump in uh so what this guy did right he goes into chat gpt exactly that and he sets up the premise right it's a girl and her robot friend 
are learning about like technology, right? Like the, the, the wonders of what a computer can do. So he put that in as a prompt at the chat GPT. It spat out an entire book for him. Then he went into another AI program and plugged in based on the, the words, um, yeah, prompts for art. So that's how you got the, he got all the art for the book done and all the words for the book done like that. Then went through Amazon, had it digitally published within a day. And then within two or three days, he set up through Amazon services where you, he could actually print the book and have it shipped to people. So in under a week, there was no book using just AI and Amazon. That thing is now printed and on people's shelves. That's insane. Like, is it, is it, you guys got to explain this to me later on. Like, is this like an app or like a website and you just go on yeah, and start? It's uh, it's freeware. So the, the problem it's with what? using it, it's like freeware. You can go online and use chat GPT. Uh, wow. The problem with using AI for art is you get a lot of uncanny valley stuff that happens. So like they'll have the wrong number of fingers and like weird things happening. This girl oh, has yeah. four legs, you know, like. <laughs> Yeah. And it, like a weird maybe she mustache. identifies as a woman with four legs brian <laughs> hey, i'm not judging i'm just saying like that's what you get when you do ai stuff people with too many teeth too many fingers it's like weird look, look this up brian see if you can find it because i saw an article that they asked artificial intelligence to come up with a uh an animation or no sorry uh an artistic impression for each country and they brought up all these amazing images that were drawn for like England and America and Japan and all the rest. Just see if you can bring it up, Brian. Unbelievable. Unbelie and it takes into uh, consideration all their cultural influences and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. Like the Japanese one had like a guy with a samurai sword. And, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah so stuff like AI, that, you know. This whole AI thing is so fascinating to me. I just don't know shit about it. I think I just need to. Uh... Oh, yeah. Look, here we go. Oh, whoa. Yeah, and the artificial intelligence just does this. Keep going. Look, look at them. Look at Australia's kangaroo. That's badass. There's England. UK, yeah, UK's was pretty cool. Yeah, unbelievable. There's, I mean, oh, I tell you what, Thailand, soon, yeah. it's going to be crazy. You know what I mean? Because you're not going to need. That's insane. I mean, of course, you want to be intelligent That's by so yourself, cool. but like, like, what's the point of writing a book when artificial intelligence can do it? In three seconds, yeah, and way right. quicker, and way better. And probably you know way I mean? better, yeah. Way better. And it's going to get even smarter because as of right now, it's just going off people's, um, you know, what it's learned from the English language. Yes, mm -hmm. Hamilton. So I read another one where a guy uh, worked as a copywriter. Uh, his boss found out that it was way cheaper to just input, like, the prompts into chat GPT. Uh, and then it was going to pay him to re they were going to pay him half his rate to rewrite the articles to make it sound like a human wrote it and not a computer. Wow. So that's ins like, so, so I I'm still not familiar, Brian and Harrington. You two seem to know a bit more about this, um, chat GPT. So I can just go to a website, is it? And I can just, do you have to subscribe? Do you have to pay whatever it is. And then you just put in, write me an essay on Anthony Smith. And um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Something. Something. Kind right? of. Uh, there. Uh, there is definitely a subscription for it if, if you sure. want to go that way. But there's also a free route as well. And uh, yeah, you just pretty much ask it questions or you put in something, you know, what what happens when this happens, whatever, whatever. Write me a thousand words on this and it'll go boop. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. are d using it to write their college essays and stuff like that. It's wild. It's and wild. There's, but still. And there's probably no way to figure that out, like if you're a teacher, right? Well, no, exactly. It's not like you're copying someone else's work. Well, it's, essentially, you had artificial intelligence write its own piece of work. It mm -hmm. still has like that uncanny valley situation in language as well. It'll say things that don't make sense, uh, you know. Yeah. But like, like, the like all the tenses or stuff will be right, but the words will be wrong. Yeah, you know? I was gonna say like like if you like certain languages, if you translate it like um, word for word, doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, it, yeah. You know, but I guess you could tweak that a little bit. Yeah, anyway, yeah, enough of proofread it. Enough of a couple of knuckleheads talking about artificial intelligence. <laughs> yeah. We definitely don't know what we're talking I don't about. Know shit about. I haven't got shit. any real. I haven't got real intelligence, let alone artificial. <laughs> um, should we get to some questions? Yeah, fuck yeah. Let's do it. Let's get to some questions. Let's get to you know some the, questions. You know the deal by now. If you have a question, 
We employ you to send them in. Bympod at gmail.com is the website. Please send them in the more creative, funnier, hilarious, original, deeper, the better. And if you're watching, if you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you find podcasts, make sure you subscribe to the show and you leave a five-star rating positive review. It helps us out on all those platforms. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you hit that notification bell to find out whenever new content drops. Also, if you want to catch over 400 episodes completely ad-free and uncensored, head to gasdigitalnetwork.com, use the promo code BYM, get a seven-day free trial, and check out over 20 great shows on the network. What do we have right now, Brian? All right. So the first question today comes from Mr. Edward Eaton. He's been trying to get one in, but this is the first one that he got. What's up, Edward? Hello, guys. Hopefully this question gets put on. Maybe the last one was shit, but this one's going to be good. I was thinking, like, when I watched Leon Edwards' uh, interview that he did with Spin, <laughs> like, do fighters ever do this? And if not, do you not think it would be a good game to, like, basically text your opponent when you're feeling a bit cocky, like you're gonna get a smashed dickhead, just like little things like that, or just like basically terror him, and then get other people to terror him in the DMs, and maybe it could have an effect in the fight. I don't know. Do people fighters do that? DM each other like, "Can't wait to smash your face in, you bitch." You know what I mean? Kind of use that sort of like Conor McGregor chatting shit. You know, all the way through leading towards the fight. I don't know. I thought if I was be a fighter and I was there, like came from a good training session. I'd be like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to message him, get in his head. You're a bitch. You know, I'm going to smash your head. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> we get him. it. Fucking thanks, fight, buddy. It? Shut up. Uh, thanks, buddy. We appreciate the question. Yes, that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think even now with social media, it has got so much easier. You know, back <laughs> in the day, you would need to have their phone number or whatever. But now you just put a tweet out or whatever. Anthony, have you got any examples of what he's talking about off the top of your head that you've been involved in or that you've heard about? Um, I was supposed to fight a guy from the UK. Um, I wish I could remember his name, but I can't remember his name now. He was not the UFC. He's not anymore. Um, but as soon as we signed the contracts uh, and, and it got Tom announced. Tom Kong Watson? No, no, it was an 85 er If yeah, Tom Watson was 85, no, I don't, I don't remember his name. Luke though. Barnett, no, no, fuck, I don't remember now, but it'll come to me later, probably. But he, uh, as soon as we signed the fight, each other, I mean, he was in my Twitter DMs, he, all of his fans, he was tweeting about me. Honestly, it bugged the shit out of me. He bothered me <laughs> like pretty bad, like, he got under my skin pretty quickly. So I've never done it to anybody else. I've, of course, I've tweeted back and forth to people before, but never, I've never DM'd anybody. Yeah, when Twitter first came on the scene, because I was fighting in the UFC before it was a thing. And then when it first came around, I was like, oh, this is great. So I remember, yeah, I mean, I was always talking smack over the years. You know, it made in it the fun. DMs? Not in the DMs, but just in, you know, just, just mm -hmm. public tweets, you know, to, I remember to Alan Belcher, Alan Belcher was trying to fight. And I'm like, you need to forget, you need to forget having a fight with me and, look for a fight against uh, that tattoo artist that drew that abomination <laughs> on your arm. I think that was one of my tweets. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It just made it fun. As soon as social media came out, because think about it, before then, it was literally, if it was an international fight, you wouldn't see each other. You wouldn't interact. Maybe you might hear an interview that a journalist did. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but then now all of a sudden, you, just a push of a button, you can send a message, mm -hmm. you can threaten them, you can say, well done, you can be full of respect and say, can't wait to meet you in the Oxcon, whichever way it is. But you can contact them by the push of a button. It really was a game changer. Yeah, you know, as long as I've been fighting, it's there's always, you know, back in the day, I think on the regional scene, you see a lot of beefs, like local beefs in the regional scene because uh, everyone's so hungry and everyone wants it so bad and you, you run into those people a lot. So there was a lot then. I don't really talk too much trash these days, but if I really don't like anybody. No, you don't. You don't, no, Anthony. You don't talk much. a lot of smack. When's the last time you've had, I think I think I can answer that, a, a nasty or a bit of back and forth. Would that be the Ryan Spann fight? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I just, you were on fire. I did, him and I did not get along. We're just, we just, Are you good now? No, no, we don't no. vibe. No, That's we don't vibe. That's an emphatic no. No, no. Like Mr. Smith there. Okay. What's he going to okay. do about it, though? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, what else we got, Brian? All right. Next question we have is from uh, Toby from BYM Laughs. What's up, Toby? What's up, go. BYM Laughs guy here. My question to you today is, which of these things would you most want to see implemented in the UFC in 2023? Would it be to, number one, have a new weight class at either 160 or 165 pounds? Number two, 
to not have a weight cap of 265 pounds for the heavyweight division. Number three, to have either a four-man or eight-man style tournament championship. Number four, to have a cross-promotion championship fight. Or number five, to implement a new glove, such as the Trevor Whitman glove. Thank you, as always, for the content. Uh, just just, just pause that, Brian, so, so we can leave them on there. Sorry, What's up? Sorry. Did you just bring it to the end so we can see those five there? Because really they're all pretty good. I've got a question for him, though. On the BYM Laughs, which is a page on Instagram, give it a follow. Why does he always have us sped up ridiculously? I get it because he wants the clip shorter, but yeah. we sound we sound ridiculous. Well, we're both kind of animated too. So when we're yeah. talking, <laughs> just, <laughs> we just look put it in speed. Stop it. Um, Anthony, I'll let you go first. I mean, they're all good suggestions. If you had to pick one of them, what would you go for? Or or do you have one of your own, a new rule? Um, I'd like to see a couple new weight divisions. I, I wouldn't be so stuck on the 160, 165, but if you were to do, you know, like a 165, 175, 185, 95. 95. Yeah. I, I would, I'd like to see a couple new weight divisions, but if I had to just pick one, I'd love to see no weight, no <sighs> weight cap on heavyweight. That one doesn't bother me so much, you know, because realistically, who were you catering to? You know, and like those big, big heavyweights, yeah, they might have to cut a few pounds. I had to cut pounds every time I had to make a weight, uh, mm. every time I fought. So, you know, uh, and realistically, there's not too many 350 pound massive athletic guys. You know what I'm I saying? I think there's a lot of them. Yeah, well, maybe I, I'm I wrong, think, but it's not the I one that speaks we, to me. I think that we, we miss out on a lot of athletic, huge, really, really good guys at, with by capping it at 265 think about this nfl linemen there's a lot of them guys no, that yeah. are six eight six nine three hundred pounds and move well and are super athletic and fast and and those guys just can't make 265 pounds i think we cut out a, a pretty big chunk of guys that, that all was right really well, crazy I bring them in weights. bring them in bring them in uh the the weight class is for sure it should yeah. go 55 65 75 85 95 205 mm -hmm. and and what doesn't want to do that the ufc don't want to do it and i'm sure they've got their reasons um but it'll make it more exciting there will be more champions you know yeah. and it, yeah you'd have people competing more in their correct weight class what was the other one new gloves new gloves that needs yeah. to happen as well mm -hmm. the new gloves for sure those are all it's great. Not, they were all great and what was the other one new gloves because uh, brian oh, decided to take one? it away Cross promotion uh, championship fight. <laughs> I mean, yeah, great, great. Who cares? That, yeah. that does the excitement. That'd be nice. It'd be nice to see because yeah. I would like to see champion here going up against that champion. If I had to pick one, what was your one? Uh, no, no cap on heavyweight. Yeah, mine would be the weight classes. I'd like yeah. to see more weight classes. Me too. Just simply because I was two or five, and this is personally completely selfish reason to. 205 to 185. It's a 20 pound drop. Yeah. 95 that's, has been nice. That's a big drop. Do you know what I mean? I look back at some of my old fighting pictures, I'm skinny as a rake. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Trying to <laughs> yeah. make 185, a 195. Oh, oh. Yeah. come on. Brian, we got one more, my friend. We sure do. We had a couple more if you wanted to go, but right, well, let's uh, do a couple. I let's can do a save couple. them for Thursday we'll as do well. A couple. All right, so we got uh, another question here from Josh from Manchester. Go on, Josh. BYM Podcast, what's going on? Josh here from Manchester. One question today, Anthony and Mike. If you could pick one fight in the UFC to get a neutral fan into watching the sport, what fight would it be? Mine would be Robbie Lawler versus Brian Barberina. That was last year. It's an absolute stomper, that fight. And also, for Mike Harrington, just a quick one here, buddy. You do realise when you have this baby, mate, you're going to have no fucking money, you're going to have no fucking life, and you most certainly, certainly are getting no fucking sex for minimum 18 months. Anthony, Mike, you can vouch for me on that, can't you, boys? Anyway, stay safe, boys. Have a good day. Yeah, mate. See, look, that is exactly how you do a question, yeah? Right? You get straight to the point, you deliver it. I think, mm -hmm. I think Harrington has forgot about that, Anthony. We're both fathers. Yeah. Life changes. It does get better. You have a purpose in life. You want to provide as much as they can 
But, but... It's going to suck for a minute. There's a lot of negatives initially as well. Joke's on you. I already have no money and no life. <laughs> With that little bit you've got, it's going to go a lot less further. Oh, bless. Um, what was his question? One fight. One fight. I mean, that's a good one that he chose. I thought he was going to say uh, Robbie Lawler versus... Uh, uh, Rory McDonald. McDonald. Rory McDonald. Rory, yeah. That when he was say, before he even said that, I would, that fight popped in my head. Dustin Poirier. No, no, no. Michael Chandler versus Justin Gagey. That That's would a be one. a great one. Poirier. Dustin, po- Dustin Chandler. Poirier, Chandler. Yeah. There's a couple right there. I'll throw this out. Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor, too. Great fight. Yeah. Great fight. Francis Ngannou, Derek Lewis. Oh, yeah. The staring match. That was the best <laughs> staring match we've ever seen. Um, <laughs> Michael Bisping versus Anderson Silva. I just got to throw that. That's one a okay. That's a really good fight. With even a cheeky one, a little, a little bit. But that is a really good fight to watch, though. It's it was a good one. Uh, all right, one fight though, Anthony. One fight. You took my choices there. What's one out of the box? Obscure, but only a mind as analytical of yours could come up with. There's Mateus Gamrot. Mateus Gamrot. Saruki. Armin. Armand Sarukian. I will say Dan Hooker, Dustin Poirier. Yeah, that's a good one too. That was a good one as well. That was a really good one. Brian McKay. That's B. McKay's right on Twitter and social media platforms. If you care to give the man a follow and at the M Harrington also, if you want to follow Harrington, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Go on. Uh, We got one more question here. It's uh, from Mr. Richard. Mattison. All right. Uh, there we go. What's up, guys? Uh, love the podcast. Uh, my first question is for Mike. Uh, Mike, if um, if you could be in a remake of any of your favorite movies, um, which one would you want to be in? And then my question for Anthony is, um, Anthony, when you do become the undisputed champ, uh, what's going to feel better to you? Uh, proving yourself right or proving the people that have believed in you since day one right? Uh, those are my questions. I uh, love the podcast, guys. Brian and Harrington, uh, you guys are the best at what you do. Uh, Harrington, congrats on the baby. Let's just hope that she doesn't look like you. Thanks, guys. God bless. <laughs> love that. That's not nice. That's not nice. Uh, Harrington. He said we were good at things, though. Yeah, I know. Again, the best in the business. Yeah, here you go. You went a little fucking far there. He just got a little carried <laughs> away with himself, didn't he? Like, a compliment's all well and good, but you can't just flat out lie to these people. You know what I mean? Give them a right. little bit of reality. Uh, Anthony, what say you? What's going to feel better for you? Um, out of those two things, I think just giving some, I don't know. Oh, it's, It would almost be like giving a gift to the people that have supported me the whole time, you know? Like that it was worth it. So I guess proving them right. But you know what I really look forward to? I don't have this unrealistic view of what it's going to feel like to be the champion because obviously I've never been the champion of the world, but I, uh, I've i talked to enough guys that have, and, and I would guess that you'd probably say the same thing, that once you do it, you probably have a feeling of, oh, that's it. You know, like there's the initial – reaction and and jubilation or whatever but after that it's probably just like another fight you know and then the stress gets more and more and more and i and i get that but i think the relief of just finally getting it Mm. i don't think i'll i I think my biggest problem will be carrying afterwards because it's it's i don't know maybe changing what whatever your motivation is and and, because it's the only thing i've been focused on for my entire adult life so I think the the one problem I'll have is fighting that feeling of relief where I just find you, like you get like a monkey off your back or, or a weight off your shoulders. I look forward to that though, that like, okay, like now I got it. Now, now if worse comes to worse, no matter what I can, I can move on with my life if I have to. Mm. What, is better for you? Is it the motivation? Like ever since you started becoming a fighter, did you want to become the champion or I mean, the two kind of, they're not mutually exclusive or you just give the better life to your family. Or was it a bit of both? It was a little bit of both. It was a little yeah. bit of both, but really I, I think I just came from, 
I came from nothing. I came from a small town where there's not a lot of people that end up doing anything really big with their life. Um, and I just want the whole world to have to acknowledge that I'm the best in the world, even if it's for that one day. It, if I lose it the yeah. next day, I wouldn't even care. Like just this small town Nebraska kid that no one ever thought was going to do anything with my life. Like the whole world will have to fucking acknowledge that that day I'm the best in the world. I don't give a shit about tomorrow, but that day I was the best yeah. in the world. And you yeah. can't ever take that from anybody. I think that's a good place to end. You can't get it better than that. And I hope it happens and I'm sure it will. Obviously, big weekend for you this weekend. Yeah. Um, whatever happens, I hope it's the best scenario for you, Anthony. Of course, that's out of your control, whether or not Jamal or Glover don't make the walk. And if they do, and if you do happen to do it and you do end up walking in there, my God, buddy, Crazy. we're behind you. Anthony and Brian are behind you. All the be believers, your family, your friends, your loved ones, uh, so we, whatever happens, we wish you the best. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the show. Thursday, we have a number of guests. We also have yeah. Darren Till joining us. I think we're going to have a little interview with Glover to share it as well. Uh, fingers crossed. We're trying to make that happen. It's a fluid situation to use a business term right now. Uh, but yeah, Thursday, we've got another jam-packed show. And Anthony, you're, you're going gonna, you're gonna to endeavor to join us. I am going to be there. I'll be there. Even if it's even if we got if we're having some scheduling conflicts, I'll come on for a little bit no matter what. Just just jump on the phone five minutes. Boom. For sure. Beautiful. For sure. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, take care.